this piece isn't just going to sleep. I hope you realize that. And uh, it's, it's a very deep awareness of who we are. And when we are attuned to it, it's always present. That's one of our principles. Of, I'll be going through four of our principles that we've discovered along the way. Uh, there was a group of us uh, about 20 years or so ago, and we took on a kind of an assignment for the Institute for Individual and World Peace to essentially identify all the keys to peace so that if we were engaging and expressing these keys, peace would be present uh, regardless of circumstances uh, and regardless of any conditions in the world. So if that's something that you would consider valuable, uh, I consider that these keys still work. Uh, and, and since we uh, discovered them, I, I would say that uh, we haven't found that any more keys are necessary, that it's good when it's simple that we can find something that works like one, two, three, four. So we're going to have an opportunity tonight to attune to it, what I often happen or experience when I do this level of work with people is uh, it is a bit like you are the choir and I'm the choir conductor. And then, you know, we sing. We, we love to sing and we love to harmonize. And that's part of who we are. Maybe uh, I get in a little preaching so that I'm preaching to the choir. Uh, that you are folks and you are folks who love peace. You already engage peace in your life. Uh, that it's something that's valuable to you, important. Uh, so then what are you doing here if you already are engaged in peace and you know a lot about peace already? And so part of what we're doing tonight is an attunement. Um, and there's a, a consciousness uh, that we, we call the traveler. Anybody ever heard of uh, the other part of it is mystical traveler consciousness? So... Most of the group gathered here, and I bet most of you tuned in, are aware of that. So the organization that we are referring to as sponsoring tonight, the Institute for Individual and World Peace, is part of the Church of the Movement of Spiritual Inner Awareness. It's a work founded by John Roger. Uh, and recently, uh, myself, along with um, about 140 of my friends, were in Israel in Jerusalem celebrating John Rogers' 80th birthday, a very special occasion just in and of itself. And um, as part of uh, what took place, uh, we often do gatherings that awaken who we are spiritually, who we are as souls living on the earth at this time. And, uh, you know, my point of view is that there's about seven billion plus souls, because that's how it's working currently. <laughs> if you turn around, there's more, uh, as we would see them, bodies like you, like me. Uh, and inside is a consciousness of the soul. So this really is the primary work that I'm involved in, that John Roger has been doing uh, 50 plus years very actively and continues to this day. So if you're interested, if you're new, uh, you know, I would encourage you to find more out about the movement of spiritual inner awareness, uh, and, and uh, you would probably be amazed if you're brand new, like this is your first occasion, the depth we can go. <laughs> so we, we do have a seminary. We have a program that is a master's program, a doctorate program. Maybe we'll say some more about that, but these days, uh, everybody has a website. How many of you have some kind of website? You know, about half the room here. So uh, it just seems like if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you end up with a website or something like that. Um, but not required. It's not necessary if you, you still don't have one. Is there anybody here that still does not have a cell phone? You don't have a cell phone? There's a guy back there. And the one he, oh, he has one, but it doesn't work. So he's, he's working on... Uh, having a cell phone. <laughs> but you, generally, you don't have a cell phone? Have you ever had one? I've got one, but it's, it's inactive. 
Yes, he, he had one too, so it's inactive. But when did that happen? I mean, some of us are, uh, have been around long enough uh, that we know. I remember when I didn't have to have a cell phone. Um, so things are progressing in our world, but if you read the news, there are some things that are kind of the same old, same old. And, and to me, there are things that are going on in our world right now, um, probably not very far from here or wherever you are, that are disturbing, you know, that are violent, that are uh, things that we really don't want in our world. So how would we transform the things that are disturbing? So we're going to look at that tonight. We, we face it straight on, whatever that might be. Um, so we'll find out what disturbs our peace, and hopefully we'll get on to the next part of it. And, and how could we move more fully toward peace? Uh, and so that's when the keys are engaged. Are you ready for another dose of Moments of Peace, Roger? Okay. And, uh, and I really want to honor Roger because it's like we're doing some dog and pony show. I don't know who's the dog and who's the pony, but it's about... There's two of us here tonight with some very powerful help uh, voluntarily from some people. Um, there we go. We'll get the screen to come down. But I, I want to have some more um, opportunity to hear from John Roger directly because I, I find it's powerful. It's powerful for me to hear him speak, hear his words. And so we've got some uh, other moments of peace. These are short videos. Sometimes there's music, sometimes there's some words uh, that would help us be more attuned to the peace that's present. done in the Garden Tomb in Jerusalem. They've dealt with Iraq and Iran and those areas that are under oppression by the Prince of Darkness. The war that's going on the ground is not the war. That's a game of monopoly. The war that's going on there is going on in the spirit. A long time ago, uh, it was mentioned that the Prince was coming to see it was Daniel. He said, I would have been here sooner, but I was delayed for a week or two before your God, your words were heard. But I've come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. It's quite obvious that nobody in the physical could do that. Then Michael, one of the chief princes of the archangel, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. And I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future. For the vision concerns the time yet to come. We are in that time. Um, so we, it's amazing that the movement of spiritual awareness was called on the first line. And it's amazing. You ever played a game, Red Rover, Red Rover, where you grab hold of hands and there's other people grabs hold of hands and you call somebody to try to break through? And all you do is you have to hold them. You can't let go. If you let go, they get to take somebody back to their side. And what they do is they attack. And all we do is contain them. Rapping. And what happens when they're pushed back, they destroy each other. We don't do anything except contain. You don't have to fight anybody, get angry, get upset or nothing. Just stand in your purpose and move on your purpose. If they want to move, they'll move. If they don't, they drop aside. And you don't look back. Because there's somebody there who will take care of it. So that is intercessory work. There is intercessory prayer where from our consciousness here, we ask that the light be sent to the spiritual realm that is involved in intercessory work. And the messengers of light and the angels, the archangels, can take that energy and, and confine it, hold it, and then it goes to this area and it's used as a barrier. And our prayers are exceedingly good.
individual peace starts with you individually. It starts with your breathing as a fundamental response to life. That's not a radical approach. It's a very fundamental approach. The next time somebody around you gets an anxiety attack or an asthma attack or emphysema or something with the lungs, just suggest to them that they alter their breathing like this. This is breathing up here like this. <laughs> That's just making it worse. Because you hear it, you go, oh God, I am dying. Especially when that asthmatic wheeze comes up here and goes, Arr. and if you have to throw it, you can't. Then you really feel like you're lost. So you say, open your mouth, breathe through your nose, plunge the hand, breathe through your mouth, breathe through your elbow, breathe through your forehead. We don't care what's plugged, just keep breathing it in. When the peace starts to settle, it radiates around through the body. It's a very fun, undulating thing. It goes on. It's not stale. Peace is very much. in, the pain in the neck, it's in, the pain in the back and the shoulder, it, the peace is in there. Because we didn't do anything except drop the pressure and the peace is there. Do you know how we know that biblically? Here's this guy, I, I think they call him Jesus or something like that, Joshua, Jesu, they, they had a name for him. He got on a boat with his followers in the boat just started going into the stormy weather and it was really bad. And he said, peace be still. And everybody else heard him. But you know what he said? Peace. Be still. Because he didn't tell the peace be still. Peace. To the other elements, be still. And as they became still, peace settled on the water and the ocean around them. So, peace can definitely be something very dynamic. Um, it's, it's a process within at all times. So if you ever wonder, where's the peace? It's inside. <laughs> you know, make sure you take a moment. And then it's, it's as simple as breathing in and, and breathing out. Uh, and then and sometimes in this world, that's not so easy. Um, you know, I, I have a friend, so I'm, those of you know who know Carol Barger, uh, you know, right now she's having quite a challenge with her breathing, you know, with an operation that she had yesterday. Um, you know, with tubes, tubes both for breathing and feeding. Uh, you know, so th for us, you know, well, breathing, that's, that's easy. For some, not just Carol, you know, right at this moment they could use our light. You know, that we could send it out as another kind of intercessory prayer, that because we intend it with grace, uh, with comfort, with whatever would help, uh, that that can bring peace to any circumstance. And so I like to remind us that, like that. So if if you had to, for whatever reason, leave, you know, right now, like you're uh, uh, probably in this room, and, and I hope I'm not in. Uh, insulting anybody, but you'd probably your grandchild might have a a uh, football game tonight, and you go, "Oh my God, I forgot there's a football game," and and you would need to leave, but I would want you to go with value already, that you have been rem reminded of something really valuable. Your attunement to peace is up; it's more powerful. So one of my intentions for this evening is that we all gain greater awareness of peace and our peacefulness and our opportunity to choose more fully with greater commitment and greater willingness toward that. And we'll, we'll look at that as well uh, as we go along.
The last time I conducted this workshop, I did it with my wife, Lee, and uh, so wherever you are, I think she, she has uh, something else calling to her tonight. But in any case, we were in a place called Neuchâtel. Anybody know where Neuchâtel is? Ah, there you go. Where is it? Switzerland. <laughs> Bring that lady a prize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK. <laughs> um, but it's, it's another way of saying new uh, Chatel, like, oh, new Chatel or Chalet or you know, something like that. So it's a small town in uh, western Switzerland on a beautiful lake and uh, near this, the uh, French border. And, and so we were called there for uh, some workshops and gatherings, et cetera. But we did this one there. And I was asking them about uh, the principle of neutrality, you know, that when we think of the, the politics of Switzerland, I think generally speaking, we realize, well, they don't seem to enter war. I mean, it's like a principle where they stay out of it. And then I think one of the blessings of that would be, well, if whoever wins the war could have Switzerland, maybe, why attack it, you know? Or, you know, I'm just trying to do some thinking, like it, it manages to stay, you know, in a way out of the conflict. So let's consider that neutrality is another key. So maybe I just told myself something tonight <laughs> that we have another key uh, for wondering how to access peace at any moment. Find your, your neutral, which might mean you, you need to get out of gear, whatever you're engaged in. Uh, find that place where you're not engaged. You ever have one of those moments <laughs> where um, I'm upset? And it's like, well, you need to disengage. Well, I don't feel like it right now. I feel like hitting somebody. Well, you might want to disengage. Um, and it's not necessarily easy once we're revved up. You know, we're maybe in third, fourth gear or something like that. OK, so let me. Uh, check my notes. I do have some. They've been carefully prepared uh, long ago. And you know, my tendency, uh, having do, done these kinds of events for 30 some odd years, is I sometimes want to fly off the page. Uh, so beware if you're trying to follow me. Because <laughs> some people are, what's he doing? I can't find it here in the paper. It's like, he's, he's flying off the page. So I do do that at times. Uh, and I have a, a lot of fun doing it, so that's one of the things that keeps me going. And as also, I, I just want to, in a sense, for those of you new, to give you an idea that this work is worldwide. So I do consider it's in all the corners, however many corners there are. As an organization, that's not very efficient, but thank God, maybe because of our organization alone, they created the internet. Uh, so that we wouldn't have to go everywhere. <laughs> um, so there you go. You can attend and participate uh, regardless of where you are in the world. But we still do, and, and I personalize it, I still do a great amount of traveling. And recently we had staff in uh, Moscow, and then we had Sofia, Bulgaria, then we had up in Stockholm, we had Madrid, uh, Paris, London, well, that, those aren't bad assignments, are they? Uh, uh, so, and neither is Chicago. So it's a great place. I, I love coming to Chicago. So thank you for the invitation. All right, so one question that's up for us is, uh, we can do this either way. So I'm going to put a coin in the air, and then you call heads or tails. OK. So. Uh, we got two questions. The first one, I was deciding which question based on that coin, whoever called it. So it came up, what is peace for you? And somebody's provided us with a lovely place where I could write. When I was in New Chatel, <laughs> you know, the uh, kind of um, colored pins where if you write on the board, you can erase it later. Well, they also had pens that if you write on the board, you can't erase it later. Uh, so that was a good challenge for my, my peacefulness on that occasion. So should I probably go maybe back a ways? That's what I'll do, I'll, if there's some room. 
So I just want you to consider uh, what your piece is in the moment. How would you identify it, maybe in a word or a phrase, anybody? And I'll just start out with peace is. Calm. Calm, okay. Safe. Did you say faith? Safe. safe. You know my version of safe? I'll give you an idea of what I was doing at some point in my life, including I was an umpire. Some people don't know that about me, but acceptance. I had some acceptance to get through as an umpire. Do you ever make the wrong call? And you find out the parents who are really attached to the way you call things. Stress-free. Stress-free, thank you. That's something... I we could use more of. Maybe emphasizing that part. Understanding, Understanding okay. Glowing. Did you say glowing or flowing? Glow. Okay. Well, we'll use the active part, flowing. Relax. Relax. Content. Content. I'll put that over here. That's a big word. Well, sometimes when you put M E N, like I meant to be ta detached, didn't quite make it. Present. Present, okay. All right. Now, here's the second question on the other side of the coin. What disturbs? I'm going to make it personal. You don't have to talk about my peace, but let's consider it's about your peace. So what disturbs your peace? Phoniness. Phoniness, okay. So less phones, maybe. <laughs> um, my, some, somebody back there, probably my, who was that? My fourth grade teacher. She's saying, is that how you spell phoniness? Okay, see, you're still watching over me after all these years, and I'm still concerned. Am I? No. Okay. What else? It's like anybody ever have you didn't get it, spell it quite right, and that disturbed your peace. Yeah. Disagreement. Okay. Cable companies. Okay. You must have been watching those commercials. What was the control? Okay, I heard uh, worry, and I also heard impatience. All right, I heard helpless. And it was something like not believing? Okay. Get a little column going over here. That's a good word down here. What was that last one? Righteous, Righteous. okay. Overwhelm. Overwhelm. Grief. Grief. Bad relationships. Okay. Good you can laugh. What was it? Stress? Did I hear that? Oh, I thought we would have had that one up here, but I think it was on the other one with free. What was that? Fear. Fear. All right. I think we have a good list going. So, um, you ever feel stuck when something disturbs your peace? <laughs> like, it's like, a, how could I possibly be peaceful when uh, I have so much grief, or they're giving me so much grief, or something like that? And so that's often one of the things we we deal with uh, when we're 
processing toward peace. Let me check with you and see if um, under your chair, or maybe you discovered it by now, there's some pieces of paper and a card. It's a lovely card that could fit there the next time you go to pay for something and maybe you realize, do you take the peace card? <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they will. Who knows? Okay, so there's, there's something, and we don't, I'm, I'm checking. We don't, do we have this one written up on the, the board, this chart? Okay. And then uh, do you have any idea if they have one online? They, okay, so those of you online, you have your own version. And uh, in here, I'm going to kind of encourage you to go along with uh, what you have as a, Eight and a half by eleven, if if I got that right. Okay, so in our working with the principles of peace, um, I'm doing this. See, tonight I'm flying a little bit off the paper because normally I would have talked to you about the four principles by now. But I'm going to trust myself that that there's a reason why I'm going to do this now with this group, maybe for just one person that that. In your whole life, peace will suddenly be brilliant in your understanding because we'd spent some time on this chart. And, and it was something we worked on for quite a while as a way of um, concretizing, you know, or, or bringing it down to earth. Like if you had to put it as a map and as an organizational chart of the organization peace, how would you? Uh, Organize it. So across the top is a phrase, one accord, and the word peace. And one accord is, is something that John Roger has talked about on occasion, uh, a couple seminars if you're, you want to follow up. What is the one accord? And then there's another one called doubting the ever-present Christ. Um, and there's probably a few more, but those two in particular uh, really go into the depth of what we mean by one accord. And it's a very special state, like a peace that surpasses understanding. You know, what, what would we describe it? So we describe it as one accord, that there's a state that we can get to uh, with ourself. And let's check that. Have you ever had a moment, it just takes one moment in your life, when you were at peace with everything, you had the experience. There was nothing that you could think of, nothing that was occurring that you didn't have the experience of. I have peace toward that. I'm in a peace with that. I'm getting some nodding heads. Maybe some of you go, what are you talking about? What world are you in? OK, well, let's consider that that's something we can all experience, that there is a peace that surpasses every single condition. And having access, knowing how to access that one accord would be very valuable. Having the keys to the one accord process and the presence. So on the, the paper are the more keys. They're, they're more like, well, how would you move toward peace, going towards the super state of peace we call one accord? So in the middle, um, Oh, we also have across the top, peace is a process. And, and that's just a way of saying it's in motion. It's dynamic. It's alive. So we need to be moving toward peace to keep it up, and to hold peace, to walk in peace. It's something that's a dynamic, like keep going. Don't stop. Um, in vertical letters, uh, well, across the top it says toward, like issue, and then there's toward, and then there's some things that I consider are like arrows. They're not very pointed. If we're going to win peace, we, we don't often have very many pointed things around. <laughs> How many of you have gone through the um, TSA security at airports, and they go, do you have any things that would hurt me? Have you ever had a TSA person ask you that? And it's like... Why would I have something to hurt you? Why would I want to hurt you? I just met you. Um, but it's an interesting question because it gets me going like, you know, is there anything in your bag that, that's sharp or, you know, and, you know, like a knife, you know, it's like, no. And then sometimes 
I still like uh, pocket knives. Does anybody else still like pocket knives? So uh, there's some warehouse in the sky where all the pocket knives <laughs> gather <laughs> that we've all contributed. <laughs> so anyway, most of the time I, I don't bring them on, but every once in a while they say, see, this could hurt me. You don't want to hurt me. So in vertical, we have intention, awareness, and willingness. And there's where the movement is. So be aware of what kind of process am I in? And if I want to consider, am I in a process toward peace? Is that my experience? Is that my awareness? If it's not, and so then that's kind of a hint, like when we're in against this. And so that's a vertical word that's kind of summarizing what disturbs our peace. Againstness, some form of againstness. Either I'm against something or something's against me, or I'm in the presence of againstness. You know, this is where the disturbance often is. And when it gets personal, where we're in againstness, like I hate this, or worse, you know, we, we feel it. It's in ourselves. It's in, they can measure it, you know, and, and things like brain waves and the, and the heart and the blood pressure. And there's lots of ways that we could say, you're not at peace right now. You're disturbed. Uh, you know, because the body also tells the story. There's uh, a relationship with the body to stress that shows up as tension. Uh, I think also, I'm not a medical doctor, but inflammation, like what is that swelling? You know, what happens when things are getting stuck or there's pressure? So some of the words, uh, and we call them issues. Uh, so what are the issues that you have where there's some kind of againstness? There's a conflict. So we have uh, withhold, miscommunication, control, uh, irresponsible, disrespect, judge, mistrust, resist, confusion, etc. Because... The list could go on. Um, there's a dynamic that we kind of discovered when we were looking at this called closed. Like, are you open or are you closed? And closed is often, you can't have peace with those people. There's never going to be peace in that situation. That's, see how that's closed? Like, why bother? Uh, you know, so it's closed. It's not open to change, to shift. So what we see is that if we have an intention and a willingness in our awareness toward, well, you can have it in the negative, and that will also create and produce issues, like more issues and more against us. But you can obviously change that direction so it's going towards peace. So these are counterpart words. And we're not trying to make a case like this, these are the perfect matching words in creation, uh, but that's what we were intending to find, like the other side of the coin. So if you're in withhold, uh, then participate. If you're in miscommunication, then communicate. If you're in control, uh, then accept. Maybe that's not necessarily the word. There's a word that's real close to that, cooperate. So if something's going on and it feels like control, that maybe there's an opportunity there for you to cooperate more <laughs> or start at acceptance, like, okay, uh, I don't have to be for this. I just don't have to be against it. The counter to irresponsible is responsible. Disrespect is honor. Judging, forgive. Mistrust, trust. Resist, let go. Confusion, understanding. And at the very bottom is open. So sometimes it's just what would help you be open? It might be relax. Um, now it seems like long ago, but at one time it wasn't so long ago. There was uh, an event called the Oslo Peace Accord. 
and it led to a state between Israel and Palestine uh, that was perhaps for the first time ever between those two states. And uh, I'm not trying to be political, like, why are you calling it a state? And it's like, uh, I'm just trying to say there's a situation there, and it, it was positive results. There was things happened that hadn't happened before. At the very beginning, the Oslo uh, Peace Accords, and they had people coming from Israel, I think a lot of volunteers, I don't know all that, the dynamics, but it was basically Palestinians, some high level, and Israelis, some high level, but maybe just some ordinary folks as well. Uh, and, and going to a, another rather neutral place called Oslo. They started out uh, with just getting to know each other and purposely not talking about any issues. Like the rule is you don't talk about issues, you talk about where do you live, what do you eat, uh, what do you do in your free time, how many children do you have, um, you know, where'd you get your education, whatever, those kinds of things. So they start out, and that in and of itself, I'm quite sure it changed things. So we could say there was communication, there was more understanding, um, there was more honoring, there was a, quite a few things going on. Not necessarily trust, but maybe, you know, who knows. Participation, yes, participation in what? Let's just get to know each other. And um, as I recall, that they had an assignment where they had to introduce people that they just met. Like an Israeli had to introduce a Palestinian to the whole group. You know, so if you just kind of get this exercise, like something's going on that in its nature is peaceful or peace-like. And that opened up the situation to find resolution where they hadn't been able to find it previously. So I want you to consider we're doing something like that tonight. Again, um, maybe you're the choir and go, hey, you know, I'm not a problem. I'm not out there fighting and creating havoc and mayhem. But I'd just like you to consider that there's more room for every one of us to move and shift. And, uh, you know, if you've heard of the 100th monkey and now I think it's called the... Uh, tipping point. At some point, there was a monkey who tipped it. And then they called, oh, that's a tipping point. So that's my sense of humor. Because uh, there was a, these trendy things that come up in our world. Uh, you know, like you remember when there was a janitor, but they're kind of like long gone now. Nobody's got a job taught now. I don't even know what they're called anymore. But there was a sanitary engineer things like that, that it changes the way we refer to it. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to the principles of peace, and I bet there is this one up here. So some people have done a lot of preparation work in advance, and they even label them, I love it, see they call them keys, which is a way I like to refer to them. So here they are. And uh, if I'm correct, you all have them as another sheet of paper available to you. So if you're new tonight, um, I consider that we could go into any situation in the world and create peace if people were willing to consider that these are facts. This is true. And, and uh, it doesn't mean you have to believe it. Just consider it and work it. Spend some of your consciousness on considering that peace is present. That peace is a, a choice available regardless of any circumstances. So it comes to a choice. So we can choose the peace that's present. We can choose to relate to it instead of, well, there's also uh, the other stuff the mayhem, the conflict, the violence. You know, uh, in the scriptures, uh, there's a place, uh, I think, in the New Testament. I don't have chapter verse, but it's, it's something 
like the evil of today is sufficient. There's enough negativity. Let's not create more of it. So there's enough disturbance in the world. Let's be about the business of choosing peace, regardless of the circumstances. And I, this, this word regardless is where I find we often get hung up. Well, I could be peaceful if they would just, if they hadn't, and I hear people say, I can't forgive that. I can never forgive that. That shall never be forgiven. So I'm reminded of a uh, you know, book that's definitely become a classic. Victor Franco, uh, the, the man who was in the concentration camp. And uh, I can find it. And the title, I just want to, I, I, it's listed in my material. What's that? Man's Search for Meaning. Thank you, Roger. See, Roger's going to, he's going to get a bonus tonight as well. Because <laughs> he's just supposed to be concerned about the equipment. He's not supposed to be answering my in-depth peace questions. But Very good. Yes, Man's Search for Meaning. So, um, essentially, I'll, I'll, I'll make this amazing book simple if you haven't read it. But it's, it's someone who realized, discovered, uh, experienced you know, peace, beauty, harmony in a concentration camp with all the horrors that went on. You know, that, uh, you know, they're just kind of unimaginable and just in the facts of what they are. And then to, to consider someone said, well, I'm at peace with that. It's, that's kind of even more unimaginable. How could you possibly be at peace with that? Read the book if you're, you're interested, because I, I consider it's one of those, those works and testimonies of people that have been through the hardest of circumstances and come out testifying in their life that peace is present, peace is a choice available, regardless of any circumstances. Peace is an inner process big, giant key. <laughs> so that takes it out of having anything needed in the world. Now, some people say, well, then it's off, because if, if there's no peace in the world, it's like, well, remember, you're in the world. So you bring your peace to the situation. You know, what comes to mind, you know, it's a very powerful image, I'm, I bet, pretty close to all of us saw it at some point. It's the man in the Tiananmen Square in China stepping in front of the tank. And what difference did that man make? I mean, it, it communicated something very powerful into the world about what one person can do and what difference would it make if there was somebody there that was communicating peace and then you're, you're in the Chinese uh, army and you're in the tank section and you have a job that day and some nuthead steps in front of your, your tank. I mean, I'm trying to give it some flesh and blood here. What was the guy driving the tank thinking? Oh, my God. You know, this, this, uh, you know, why would this guy have to do it to me? Of all the tank drivers here today, he steps in front of my tank. And then it's on, it's on worldwide news, you know, and the whole world saw it. In any case, uh, just understanding that it's an inner process. And the last principle uh, is peace is a cessation of against us. I, I first heard those words from John Roger. Uh, and that to me is high stepping peace. So. So it translates to um, how, how do we stop against this? How do we stop it? And then you know another uh, example comes to mind. And uh, if if you saw the movie Gandhi and uh, what was portrayed in the film, then you saw people that were practicing a principle uh, they call ahimsa. 
I'm sure it has other names, but it's just a principle like I'm nonviolent. I'm not going to express against this. I'm not going to express to hurt you. Even while you're expressing to hurt me, I won't express it. So there was another powerful situation where it was confronting something that had a whole lot of violence in it. You know, a, a situation, and situations often involve people who are violent, who have extreme against us. So it's not saying that we all live in our idealistic uh, tower somewhere, you know, where it's all peaceful all day long in our little tower. It's saying, no, 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 you, it's stopping the against us. So there's something there, but how do you do it without against us? So there's the big key. So, so if against this comes upon you, that you stop it right there. I think it was uh, Harry Truman, the president of the United States, who had a, a plaque on his wall, the buck stops here. And just, we could all get a plaque that against this stops here. Like, you bring me against this, I will not return it. It will not go any further. Um, I'm, I'm a person who's trained in a number of things, but uh, among them are the psychology field, the counseling field. I have a master's in counseling. And it's still something I practice. And uh, I, ca I can tell you, and I don't think it's any surprise, that what went on in people's childhood years is anything but we would relate to, the, oh, that was peaceful. That was comforting. That was nurturing. It often was not, you know, what the external circumstances were. Uh, so having that dynamic uh, where it's can you let that go? Can you forgive that? Can you stop the againstness in you? Do you have that willingness? Uh, and it begins there. There's a wonderful song. You know, and the, the lyrics go, it begins with me. That, that, that the peace begins with me. So these are things we're all looking at. Again, I'm sure for the most part, you all have heard this information or something real close to it before. This is not new information. But when we start doing the willingness, when we start doing the intention, when we start clarifying Yes, it's regardless of this situation. <laughs> and then we drive somewhere tonight, right? Like I, I did tonight. And there were things going on that were tempting to have against us about. You know, it's just whatever it is. Um, and sometimes it's, it's a ordinary as traffic, whatever that is. And, um, and often we find that we, we're making the external circumstances something that takes us away from our peace that is present. Let me just tell you and remind you, you never have to do that. You never have to leave your peace. Uh, it's always present if you're willing to go within, if you're willing to connect with the intention toward peace. And, and if you're ever in a situation where you're lost, and uh, I see one of them on the ground. So this is portable. Might need a magnifying glass of some kind, or may I borrow your glasses for a moment? But it, it's this entire chart on a business size card. And I have pulled it out in situations. And I'd say, where am I in this map? And I find it. I'm in distrust. Or I'm withholding. I don't want to talk about it. I don't, I feel like if I talk about it, it's just going to cause a fight, an argument. Um, it's like, what are you doing? I'm withholding. I'm not participating. I'm not communicating. Well, <laughs> what does the map tell you you could do if you want to move it toward peace? Well, I could participate. I could communicate. Well, maybe I'll, I'll honor her. Maybe there's something that I haven't honored about them that I could honor. Um, it's like knowing that you're, while well, your enemy, if you still have them in your life, not, 
recommending that you have enemies, but if you still have someone or something, it could be as simple as a mosquito. That that's my enemy, that mosquito that's buzzing while I'm trying to get my rest. Whatever that is, if you could just move that and shift that you know, towards honoring, maybe the persistence of the mosquito, the, the design, the ergonomic uh, design, maybe if we were really tracking, we'd say, you know, you were here before I was. You know, my species came after you. There are species like that, uh, according to our scientists. All right, enough talk, let's do something about it. Because this is a, an evening that's designed as a workshop. Um, it's also designed, by the way, so we don't, as long as I can hold myself up here, uh, we don't take a break. We just go right through it as a process. Um, so here we go. We're going to be doing some questions again. Uh, I think you have them where you are and you have them online. Uh, it's the one we call, what is an issue for you? And there's five, let's see, looks like they're all, oh, yep, no, there's four questions and then <coughs> the last part is basically a declaration for yourself. So what we're going to do is pair you up, that's the timing that we've created would allow two of you to have a turn and with a partner, so one turn one partner, the next turn for the next partner. And we'll give you several minutes to go through the five parts of what is an issue for you. It's set up so that we, uh, you'll usually have an opportunity to go through each of the five parts more than once. I would encourage you to go toward the deepest issue. So whatever is, uh, I was looking for the chart and then I realized, well, it's, it's here. But whatever are the deeper issues for you. And then going back to the question we asked toward the beginning tonight, what disturbs your peace? It could be something that occurred a minute ago. It could be something that occurred long long ago, and sometimes people import disturbance. Like they're still mad what the Romans did to, Car to the Carthaginians or something like that. There's people <coughs> that import it from another age, which you know seems bizarre, but you know people sometimes read something that you'd say, well, you weren't even there. Of course, maybe they were, but you know, why are you so upset about something that happened 2,000 years ago? Well, I just am. We'll send light to those folks. So I, I look at sirens as calling out to my peacefulness or whatever would assist. So that's, that's just happen, happens. I don't do it as a, a verbal process, but I'm just making it verbal to share it with you in case you haven't uh, made that part of what you do, that when disturbance of some kind people who are hurt or in some crisis comes your way that, that there's an opportunity to bless it, to send what we call the light, send the love. And uh, what JR referred to earlier, which I, I find very powerful whenever I hear him talk about intercessory prayer and uh, having just experienced it recently when we were in Israel, you know, that that's part of what we were actively doing. Like, why are you going to Israel at this time when there's rockets? And I had several people ask me that question because when the trip was planned, it was already planned when the, and I'm referring to the situations, you know, with uh, the Gaza Strip and Hamas and all of that, that the rockets were being fired more or less indiscriminately into where we were going, where we were planning to go. And clearly, for me, the inner uh, check was green light, you're still going. And then uh, 140 people showed up and uh, it, 
it actually occurred so that about I, somewhere in the neighborhood of a week, not very long, maybe a few days before we arrived as a group, it stopped. Now, I consider <laughs> we did that. <laughs> you know, and you could go, come on. You know, what were you doing there? Staying in a hotel, having nice food? I mean, why would that make any difference? And I just look at it because we carry that purpose, uh, that it is something I carry as a light bearer, as an ambassador of peace. And, and I looked at when two or more are gathered, and uh, what John Rogers' life is about, then to me it was no surprise that somehow um, that kind of thing would occur. And I'm not saying that's what always takes place when we gather, because sometimes it kind of goes in the opposite way. Things get unglued or they seem like they come apart. Um, and, and I'm just reminded, and just to give you some reference points, we were in Morocco, I think it was like 2010, but anyway, the, the what do they call it, the Arab Spring? So it started like, I think in Tunisia, and then, uh, you know, it was moving around. Egypt, uh, a number of places were going through a dynamic process. and. Uh, my experience was while we were in Morocco that I saw it inwardly. Um, it's kind of hard to describe, but the best way I could do it right now, that's, that's an intention I'm describing to the <laughs> higher consciousness here, um, is I saw it in the ground and I saw that what had been um, kind of buried in the ground as a conflict um, as a disturbance so that if, if we were sensitive, we could walk on the ground and feel like, what's that disturbance? I can feel that there's a disturbance here. Was there a massacre at some time? Was there a big fight? Was there a disaster? You know, sometimes they're like earth changes, those kinds of disasters. Um, but what I saw was it just, this energy field came across the northern part of Africa and it was uprooting, like literally coming out of the ground. Uh, but it was the, the good energy. So that's what actually what I was seeing. And I went into the Middle East um, you know, while we were there. And then I realized that it's the kind of thing that when it uproots, it's like it uproots, it kind of breaks out like, uh, you know, sh shoots like a seed that's underground it's going to be breaking ground. It's going to be needing some space. Um, so when these things occurred, for me, I had understanding of, well, what did I see? So I see this. And then I still have understanding if you say, but look what's going on in Egypt now. You know, that doesn't seem very much like spring. Uh, it seems like that there's something that's uh, not so easy. And I'd say, well, these things are maturing. You know, how would you work out peace when there's tremendous conflict? And part of it is you participate uh, and you get involved. And then when it breaks down because there's dishonoring or there's or a mistrust or there's miscommunication or these kinds of things, um, it, it just becomes something that we need to outlast. So my uh, encouragement to you is when you do this process, there's an opportunity for you to resolve an issue for the last time. And, uh, you know, do that on a personal level. I encourage you to do it very personally. I mean, these are your issues. And then well, why would I tell somebody, and perhaps it'll be somebody you're just meeting, because that's often how these exercises work. You meet somebody for the first time, it's like, why would I be telling a stranger my deepest issue, my biggest embarrassment, or my, my biggest uh, bother, the thing that makes me really go crazy? And some, some of these issues can be like that. I still encourage you to deal with it, because what comes up here is your opportunity to face it, to confront the issue with an idea that I could work this out. I could come to peace here tonight. And I want you to think of that as not just pop talk or something, like nice idea, but think about it as a reality that you could come into a realization 
that whatever is the issue, you're going to resolve it and that you have complete charge with that issue, that it doesn't have control of you. You have a willingness to bring it to peace regardless. And once that takes place, it's something that you can keep the peace. I'm sure you've heard that phrase before. Like how do you keep the peace? Well, you don't let it move back. And if it does move back, you move it back into peace. It's like as many times as something or someone, including yourself, takes it out of peace, you move it back into peace. Okay, that's kind of an introduction. I'm going to uh, do a, a demonstration here. I'll just go through the questions and the idea is that you would be facing a partner. Uh, again, for timing, it's, it's set up so there's two of you. So if you choose to do three or four, you'll just have something where we're not set up structured for that number. But you'll have fun anyway. So the first question is, what is an issue for you? So what I do, I'm demonstrating, is I don't have a prepared answer, just so you know. <laughs> like, oh, what does it say on the paper? To, I'm going to read. No, I don't. So I'm doing this live. Uh, what is an issue for you? Okay, this is what come to, came to mind. Is on the way over here, I smelled uh, petro petrofumes or you know that kind of thing, like coming out of vehicles. Yeah, whatever it is. You know, I, I don't even know what it is. I'm, I'm kind of, I don't even know if I'm being accurate in the description, but whatever I was smelling, I didn't like it. That's, that's what I'm telling you. How do you know when the issue is present? I smell it, um, or sometimes I, I can see it, or it's in my eyes, or something like that. So it says, be specific, feelings, thoughts. So maybe the feeling is aggravation, like why is this still here? Just a little background. I have a bachelor's degree in renewable natural resources. I worked as a park ranger. I worked for the Department of Fish and Game in California, uh, the Water Quality Control Board. So once upon a time, I was involved with environmental issues. Still am, but uh, I do it in a whole different way. Three, how could you best turn the issue toward the process of peace? Well, I did practice some of this on the way over, uh, so I'll share how I did it. Um, I looked at it as an opportunity to uh, return to my peace because I was aware of the aggravation. And so the first move was inside to my peace, even though I could smell it. But what I noticed is it went away. How did that happen? Well, maybe who, whatever was generating it moved away. Or maybe the wind shifted. I don't, I don't know. I just know it went away. But guess what? It also came back. <laughs> and I was like, what's doing that? And I, I felt like that because it felt like it was very powerful. Then it would go away. Then it was powerful. I'm being descriptive, by the way. You don't need to do this when it's your turn. Four, is there a deeper issue? Yes, I just know there is. Um, so really that question is, well, what is it? Not just yes. But work with the greater issue or the same issue again. So is there a deeper issue? And what I'm aware of is, um, it's like when I see people um, going with the doubt, like the fault, negative focus, and I can see myself, so I'm not outside that, I can see myself doing that, that that's some kind of habitual type of response like negative focus. The fifth part is the positive qualities that I bring to the process of peace are um, my willingness, my commitment, my dedication to peace, um, and my knowing that peace is a, not just a choice, but a reality that we can experience. 
So then if we don't, uh, we haven't stopped you, that, and do we have a, a gong of some kind tonight? So I love our gong, and I love to just hear it. I think maybe that's part of the reason I do these workshops, just so I can hear the gong again. <laughs> Please. There you go. <laughs> There must be somewhere in heaven where that gong is going because it does something to me when I hear it. Um, a lot of you know a lot more about that from your own experience. But in any case, uh, we're going to use the gong as a start your turn, stop your turn. So we'll start you. I'll be doing some uh, preparation with you to start and, and making sure everybody's situated so you can do the process uh, logistically. Then the gong will stop your turn, then we'll switch roles. I'll, I'll be talking to you again when you switch roles. So doing some more preparation, and then the gong will stop you. So there'll be four gongs, start, stop, start, stop, two turns. Anybody have a question about how we do this process? Yes? What's the length of time? Isn't it interesting? The gongs will decide. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to consult the gongs to see if there's a... I'm, I'm having some fun with you, but I'm going to pl pluck the number out of the air. Eight minutes. We're going to give you eight minutes each tonight. So there you go. So each of you will have eight minutes. Any other questions? Yes. Number five, the positive qualities. You shift when you are doing number five. Yes, you caught that. We make a shift. And I caught that too because I looked at it that we're encouraging you to go back to number one with number four. It says work with the greater issue, the same issue again. But then we take you to number five before you go back to number one. <laughs> Maybe a note to myself. Uh, we might want to change that up. But yes, you caught that. So go ahead and do the five, the five qualities, or I should say the, on the number five, it's the positive qualities. Just take a moment. And that's regardless of the issue. Look at the positive qualities that you bring to the process of peace. Acknowledge those qualities. If necessary, uh, refer to the chart. And, you, and I give you permission that you can claim all of these qualities. You can claim them. I participate. I communicate. I accept. Got the idea? Or whatever else comes forward. OK, so you can move your chairs. I encourage you to move your chairs. If you're at home, uh, you decide. Maybe move your screen or whatever you do to partner up there. Um, so go ahead and find a partner. And if you're looking for a partner, you could do like Gary just did. He get, he's getting up to find a partner. And then maybe if you're looking for a partner, you could stand up now or raise your hand. Anybody looking for a partner still? Um, and I know we have some assistants tonight that could partner up. Like who would like to work with Gary here? Or maybe, yes, okay. So again, I, I'd like to take a moment with you in preparation. So the first part is if you have your partner, and maybe your partner's out of the room um, for a break of a sort, I'd like you to consider that the partner who's out of the room is going to go first. And you could... And while you're waiting for them, you could go ahead and answer some of these questions yourself until they get back, and then you could ask your partner the questions. But what I like to do is, is pre prepare you and invite you to a deeper level of consciousness so you can do the work that's prepared for you in peace. That we've been uh, preparing for you tonight, blessing you in advance. So how would we do that? We'd ask for the light for this event. 
and we put it here in the room and wherever you are participating online, we put it with you so that whatever is going to serve your highest good is what's going to come forward for you tonight to look at. So let's trust that, that your consciousness inside is going to show you in some way what the issue is and also reveal to you more deeply how to move toward peace and how to find those positive qualities of peace. So the preparation is already done. You showed up. That's your preparation. Let's go for it. So there's some light here. So consider the light is this magic dust that we put in the room and around you and fills you. That's going to assist you to clear, to heal, to forgive, to move out what you don't need that's some, in some way disturbing you. So it's going to lift. It's going to balance. Maybe dissolve. Maybe you'll forget it. That's one of the great keys to peace. Forget it. Just don't think about it. And then we place this for the highest good of all concern. So there's a blessing for you, your partner, and all of us participating here. And then we just extend that right out to the world. So what we're doing here tonight is bringing peace to the world. The next thing you're here is the gong.
So there's the second gong. Um, so yes, we just stop and, and just consider that whatever you're working through is still working through. It uh, doesn't have to stop because of the words that the process has been engaged for you. Um, but there's also a really wonderful opportunity now to, to let your partner however this works. So if you've been answering, you'll be able to ask the questions and if you've been asking the questions, it's your turn 
to come up with the responses about the issue or issues that are here for you and working toward peace. And again, must be reminded that we're in a presence here of great opportunity to let go, to forgive, to honor, uh, to trust, to communicate, to participate. There's more. And just be aware again of the light with you and with your partner and all of us and for the whole world. <laughs> All right, uh, hopefully you all had an opportunity to take your turn and go through the issues process so that you're in greater peace. Anybody having that experience of greater peace? All right. Yes, you can ask me a question, but I would like to bring you a microphone. I see one not too far away over there. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, this young man right here. And, and if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to hear your name first. And Chuck McCoy. Hi, Chuck. You know, you're talking about this thing called peace. <laughs> Sounds like a song, huh? <laughs> yes, please. How can you have peace in a relationship when one member of that party does not want to give you an inch and is always trying to put you down and when you're trying to pursue your dream, after you've worked all your life, you're going into something that you love, and it's going to benefit the whole family eventually. Right now, it's not doing it. It's just making a little bit of money. But it's always not enough, and it's always my head is in the clouds. How do you get that other individual? All I want is my wife to stand by me mm -hmm. and give me a shot. But, you know, that's not happening. That's fair. Uh, it's fair to want what you want. I want to make that real clear. Um, but in my life, I haven't got a lot of, of things I didn't want. <laughs> I'm sure you have as well. So on the map, um, I'd, I'd put that square in the middle of control. Not that there aren't other areas there. Uh, maybe disrespect irresponsible, mistrust, but what I, I see you dealing in there, Chuck, is if you want to control your wife and it ain't working too well. Uh, so then it becomes what does Chuck want to do about it? And if you realize I want to have peace, then you know, let's look at what's on the other side of control on that coin. It's, you see that word accept? Now that may not be a very easy thing to do right now in this moment when, when something seems as though it's so unfair uh, or out of balance in what would be right or correct, loving. So I'm not trying to take any of that experience away from you, but I'm inviting you to consider where do you want to go? What do you want to experience? And if you want peace with yourself, that's very workable be able to move it towards your experience. When it involves others, I, I don't know how to do that. So I'm, I'm not a, a master of how to get others to do what I want. I don't know how to do that. But I do know how to do things that help and sometimes influence how others respond. And I've, I've found a lot of value. And I also like to hang out with folks who are in the choir just to give you some practical. So, uh, so that people that like to honor, people that like to participate, communicate, uh, trust, I like to hang out with those people. I don't always get my way, but it's, it's just something that you can look at for yourself. So I want to check back with you. Uh, does that make sense for you, or is there still something else that's hanging in the craw, not that I'm here to solve whatever that is for you. You know, I've took care of my family all these years. I finally retired. 
that's a bad thing. Well, I, that might be something right there. That one's called judgment. That's also on the issue side. Um, you know, because of where I'm looking, it's a good thing. What you described, I went, Chuck, you're a good man. You, know, you have a lot of responsibility in your life. You know, whatever you mean by I've took care of my family, I'm sure that that involves earning money and bringing it home and letting that money take care of your family, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I just encourage you to then go from judgment to forgive. <laughs> that, that could be very powerful if you are willing to, whoever seemed to be um, doing things that you don't like or you don't want, that you would forgive them. <laughs> so the question was, shouldn't that come from the other side? Okay. There's plenty of opportunity for everybody to do these things, 100%. Um, but I, I've just found if, if you put it out as they need to change, that's like good luck. I hope you make it. In my life, I often didn't make it. So I needed to do some move inside of myself to be at peace. Um, and. I can tell you, often what was called for was not easy, at least when I first attempted it. But I, I knew it was right in, in the way that it was the correct way to respond for my peace. And my peace includes others. I just see that's how it works. Thank you for your willingness to share uh, the issue and the opportunity for us to help bring that toward peace. So while we're on it, um, anybody else have something in the way you want to share or something that's still like an issue roaring? Because you know, sometimes what happens when we do this process, it stirs it up. Like, I was OK tonight. I was in my peace until you brought up the issue. <laughs> and it's like, I know. <laughs> Why did you ask me about the issue? Like, well, so you would have more peace. Uh, that's what we're doing when we get at the issue. It's not to stir you up and bother you. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, there's enough evil or disturbance in the world already, so I'm not here for that. But if we're walking around with disturbance, that's not necessary. We can be much more at peace. So let's bring my friend here. Uh, I'll let you say your name. They're going to bring you a microphone, Tony. Uh, you define peace as the cessation of againstness. Uh, I, I'm kind of a news junkie. And I feel basically that the world is full of evil. And um, it just seems to be increasing in a lot of ways. Um, so we're supposed to stop being against this evil and then we're going to find peace? Well, I wouldn't use those words most likely, but yes, just the same. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with what you just said, uh, that, that we can find peace toward the evil. And it's like, well, isn't that encouraging it or feeding it? And, you know, what I also want to point out is, is that it's a cessation of againstness, so it doesn't mean ignore the evil or ignore the againstness. So this can take great courage, great strength, great sacrifice at times. I, I, I don't know how you do it. I mean, you got all this I'm, evil. I'm with you on that. I, I think if we knew how to do it, we'd be doing it. It would be a peaceful world. I mean, it sounds like a contradiction to me. Okay. So... One of, one of the ways we look at this, Tony, is it begins with you that it's important that you look into your life, and I'm quite sure it's not full of evil, that who Tony is is not full of evil. Because I can look at you and say, I don't experience Tony as an evil, bad person. So I think essentially that, that there's a consciousness in you that wants more peace, and you see that there are those who are disturbing the peace. And, and that's, I'm sure, an understatement. And 
and uh, in certain situations with certain people. Well, my feeling is that God expects everyone to deal with evil. I feel basically that uh, a lot of people have their heads or in, in the sand. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's really encouraging evil. You well, know? you know, I think you're making a point that uh, letting evil like some kind of fire rage is not necessarily going to have create more peace. So then how would we stand up to a fire? And I, and I think in some way, well, we have to face it. We have to go toward the fire to bring it to peace, to, br to bring the fire out, like stop it in some way. I'm thinking of the apostles after Christ died. You know, I mean, they did not stop... Um, accepting what was going on. I mean, everything I've, I've read about the apostles and the disciples is they went and dealt with the evil headlong, you know, till they were crucified or killed in some way. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was the ideal <laughs> of... Uh, well, I don't think the ideal of the, uh, a life of peace is a crucifixion or a sacrifice in that way, but I do consider that at times, what's involved, and, and again, it's by choice. So it's not like everybody needs to go confront uh, whoever's perpetrating evil. I think that's something that some people would be called into that because they're Why? they're called, and let's say they they some have the consciousness are for to it. Deal with evil, and other people aren't. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? You know, where, what I'm saying is, begin with you. We all have that responsibility. So that if, if you can find peacefulness in yourself, that's a contribution into the world. It's something that goes beyond you so that you're contributing to my peace with your peacefulness. And yes, I, I consider that's an opportunity that works toward greater peace. Meanwhile, you could say, well, there's a fire raging and it's uh, out of control. Uh, I'd say, well, <coughs> let's consider that th that's where that is. I'm not called into that fire. What I'm called into is to bring peace here in this place. So there's peace here tonight. There's peace with whoever's what participating with us. Is this Ebola happening in Africa? And I, for one, uh, are really afraid and upset about it. And I don't think I'm, I think a lot of people are really afraid of it. And I admire the people that are willing to go over there and put their life on the line. I mean, they're not just pushing it out of their mind and accepting it. No, I, I, you know, you're bringing up an example that obviously in this moment, has the world's attention for, I'm sure, the correct reasons that we need to attend to a situation like the Ebola. But if we were really looking at it, there are other situations uh, that are outnumbering whatever we're looking at. You know, there are situations that are, uh, maybe it's called um, cancer that's taking more people today than Ebola. And, and so, so there's other situations that if we were Concern, we could have a crisis about that if we looked at it. The answer isn't catching. <laughs> well, you know, the way it, it spreads in, in you, it is. Uh, so, I mean, we could have a something like a, a, a talk where where is it going? And if you and I can have an energy where we're in peace while we look at these things that are issues. So we can deal with the issues without it says negativity. Cessation of againstness. Yes. So we can do that right here in this place. You cannot. You and I can stop the againstness. Um, you know, I don't have any againstness toward you or with you, and I'm not experiencing anything like that from you. I am experiencing that we're looking at the issues. 
and that we could have more peace awareness in relation to whatever that is. I mean, are you, are you saying this cessation of againstness is just in personal relationships with people? It's there. It's, it's really in, in every relationship with people and things or situations. It's in all those relationships. I don't see it. <laughs> okay. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. Anybody else? Okay, here you go. Hello, hi, good evening. My name's Randy. Hi, Randy. And first of all, John, I want to say thank you for putting on this workshop. I find it very enlightening so far, and just wanted to reach out and say that to the group. Um, yeah, um, issues. <laughs> How would you simplify or describe kind of the work that we're doing in the couples? Uh, work. Um, I also have a background in counseling for 10 years and medical degree as well, and I've always find that it's easier to give out advice <laughs> or <laughs> solutions <laughs> than to actually use it within myself. Mm -hmm. um, so the issues, with not just issue, issues that I'm having right now, is really excessive confrontation and excessive conflict, which leads to excessive anger in a relationship. And I just wanted to know, kind of on this checklist here, what I need to work on for myself, because mm -hmm. the expectations that I'm working with this uh, lovely assistant here that's actually point out that I probably have some expectations that I'm concerned about with the relationship that right. we're not getting to. Right. So I was looking for a little insight and enlightenment for that, please. Yeah, well, one of uh, the ways I respond to what you're bringing up here, uh, when we go towards anger and rage, those are often issues. And depending on, and where's the locus for that? Like, is it with yourself? You're because you can be angry or enraged with your own life and what you've created. That's certainly possible. But often it's into the external. That if we were checking. You know, what's the stimulus right now such that I'm enraged? And it's often in an external thing. And then and relationships, I, I think, are uh, probably the most popular version of that in my independent survey, uh, that they generate the most irritation uh, for people and the most challenge. And how do I do a relationship where my intention is to experience, you know, loving and nurturing and sharing the good things in life and it ends up seeming like a, I signed on for a battle or a war of some kind. How, how does that happen? And my experience with that is when it's in, in your experience, it's, it's important to acknowledge that, you know, to come into, I'm using uh, some terms that have been put forth, like ownership, like that you take responsibility for your feelings and your thoughts and understand that if you're the one issuing them, then you need to face yourself. Like, what is that about? And often, as we uh, gave as a question tonight, is there a deeper issue? And this is a big key here. If you can get to the issue, you know, like the governing issue in your life, what is it? And it can be, you know, something, you know, like I just want to be loved to love, or it can it can be you know, something on another level, like I just want things to be the way I'd, I want it, when I want it, how I want it. If people would just cooperate, I wouldn't be so enraged. Uh, I think the laughter is uh, affirming the popularity of that one. I think, and there's a lot of room in there for what I call expectations, what I assign. So disappointment is I make, I give you an appointment, like I want you to be this way, and then when you disappoint me, you didn't keep your appointment that I issued to you. It's like, well, I don't remember you issue. I didn't agree to this appointment with you. Uh, like, why are you wearing that dress? It's like, I don't know. That's the one, it's the cleanest one or something. It might even, I, I told you, I don't like that color. 
and sometimes it generates into it's crazy because we know it's not the thing. It's not the circumstance. There's something else. And that if we just let, let ourselves, it's, it's often generated from unresolved issues. And so there's uh, very large institutions called counselors and psychologists and psychiatrists who make their living off of this, unresolved issues, uh, and others. I mean, I think what's selling off in an advertisement is things that in some way will compensate for unresolved issues. That's what I'm selling you. You want this to help you with your issue. Um, so if we come into a place where you're willing to uh, confront that, like what is that about, and then where would I like to go with this? Having that awareness of your intention, like I want peace in the relationship. I want loving in the relationship, caring in the relationship. I'm, you fill in the blanks. Just being aware, then there are ways to create that more, and, and often there is some work to do. You know, that, that's my experience. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing this work because I need it. And, and the, if you're in, I'm sure they told you when you were doing you know, any psychological work, the first patient is yourself, or the first client is yourself. And then it's like, well, I never got my own self counseling resolved. It's like, how can I be qualified to go out and practice? It's like, well, that's what happens. <laughs> like you're in practice and you never really resolved your own issues. Uh, and I think a lot of people, including myself, would tell that story. Um, nonetheless, you know, there's an opportunity for it. I want to do some, some other um, work with you that's part of what we prepared tonight. And I don't think you have this on your paper, but I'll, maybe I'm uh, incorrect about that. Let's see if we got the, did you have the tools up here anywhere? Or am I going to say something about those? Okay. I don't see them, but you know what's great? It's, uh, I can either recite them to you because I know them, or I'll just look them up here right now. Okay, there's, there's three of them that have been selected. There really would be easily 50 that I could pull out from the resources. But one of them is visualization. And uh, I just want to take a moment with that. And we'll, we'll do something that I call a blessing uh, to work with these tools. But at any point, if you can get an image that's peaceful for you, even right now, like something, it may be, well, I see a beautiful pond and, and nature and birds or, uh, you know, others, you know, you could relate to in other ways, like maybe uh, you uh, win a jackpot in Vegas or something, and that's peace for me, whatever it is for you. And, and that you could pull in that image and you could pull it in in an instant so that if you ever need it, if something's really intensely bothering you, um, like a, I, I was in a doctor's office yesterday getting, getting a biopsy, you know, like a skin cancer type of thing. Um, and if you've ever done anything like that, they're not necessarily the most pleasant uh, procedures. In other words, there's some pain or there's some sting, something like that. Um, but what I engaged was my creative imagination. And, you know, one of the, the first <laughs> practices I, I did with my psychology training was something called self-hypnosis. And you go, you did self-hypnosis? Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's uh, moved on since. And so I think it's evolved. So I don't, I don't consider it self-hypnosis. I look at it much more as positive focus or positive visualization so that what I did was I just translated whatever I'm going to feel as a sensation or whatever they're doing into something that's pleasant. And, and it's like, well, how could you do that? And you, you can talk to my dentist because most of the time I do not get any kind of, um, what do you call it? 
Novigad, yeah, any kind of, uh, yeah, I don't anesthetize myself. And some people are astounded by that, like, you what? And I don't do it because I'm, I'm, uh, I want to torture myself. That's not the purpose. I do it because I've learned that I can change how I relate to it while it's occurring. So I don't relate to it as pain. I don't relate to it as irritation. Is that easy to do? No, at times it's very challenging to do. Um, and sometimes I've had Dennis just refuse. Like, I won't do it because I just... I don't tr like they didn't really trust that I could possibly withstand what they were going to do without grabbing them by the neck and trying to choke them or something. <laughs> Which, when they described it, actually had patients do that. I kind of said, okay, um, that they, they were they were taking a stand. Like I, I'm not going to do it because I don't think you can do this. And it's like, well, okay. So just to give you some idea that it's not like my way, the highway with this, but at times you can use the creative imagination as an immediate shift toward peace, towards pleasant, towards calm, towards whatever it is. Um, and it's a wonderful thing to be able to do in the midst of a conflict, like a fight, an argument, something that stings, uh, to be able to go to that instead of the reactive state. Um, and the reactive state can be like a firing pin, at least in me. Anybody that knows what being thin-skinned <coughs> translates to, it's like, a, uh, you know, I hit and ask questions later. You know, that I have that training too. <laughs> you know, because in sports, sometimes that's how you do it. Um, in any case, I, I just want you to be aware that that's a tool, like learning how to creatively imagine something to be different from what it is. Like, how would Walt Disney see this? You know, it, and maybe it's, it just comes into a whole different way of viewing. And it's like, well, that's a cartoon or that's a fantasy. It's like, but if it works, if, you're, if your mind and your sense levels translate it immediately into a pleasant experience, you understand that? It's like, well, that's what I want. And someone says, you don't understand. They're, they're putting a hole in your arm to get tissue out so they can determine if it, it uh, has some kind of disease. Like, okay, but you know, that's, I don't want to relate to it as that. I want to relate to it as they're planting a flower in my arm, a beautiful flower. I love the petals. And they're, oh, they're multicolored. They're, and there's a beautiful sprout, and then here comes a bee, and the bee wants some of the pollen, and then there's honey, and there's honey for the bears, and they're all happy bears. And, and it's already over. You understand the procedure's over by now. I didn't even get to, and maybe the doctor, John, John, come back. Where are you? <laughs> I, no, I am reminded that when I... Um, had my wisdom teeth taken out. I told the, the dentist afterwards I was going to drive home. And I was actually prepared to drive home, but, you know, that they, they couldn't believe that I was actually, that I didn't have anybody to drive me home. Uh, so at that time, I, my father came and picked me up. But that's a whole other story. But that, I kind of, that by that time, I was learning how to work this stuff, how to change my state of consciousness so that while they have me under the uh, anesthesia, I'm still talking. It's like, uh, you're not supposed to be talking while we're doing this. I, did we give them enough? It's, it's like, yeah, we gave them enough. You know, like, don't give them more. So I, I don't use it for, um, to numb myself out. It, I use it to go towards a pleasant experience. I don't use it for escapism, denial. So I, there is a hole in my arm. I can show you the stitches if you're so inclined. Uh, so it's a real procedure. Something did happen, but the way I related to it involved creative visualization. So there's a tool. We have another tool that we call chanting. We did some of that earlier tonight. Um, 
so it's something like intonation. So we're doing intonation. Um, I consider that when we sing, when we go on to a harmonic vibration like a music song, when those harmonics can be of assistance and they harmonics relate to peace directly. <coughs> so when we're in harmony, there's peacefulness. There's understanding. Uh, there's a relationship that connects instead of disconnects. So if we can do um, you know what many cultures demonstrate that in the culture are methods of harmonizing intonation. Um, maybe we think it's kind of weird because it's so different from our way. But if we move in there and say, well, what is the result of that intonation, that way of uh, vocalizing or moving in harmony, like it's often a dance or something. It can be a march or it can be people jumping up and down. There's all kinds of forms of it. So uh, when we do the Anai Hue, we re relate to it as a law of empathy, <coughs> that we're actually invoking a spiritual law that brings forward empathic experience. Now, you know, my point of view is, is you don't have to believe that. It's more about the experience. Um, and it doesn't have to be an IHU. It could be whatever serves you. Um, my, my example that's coming to mind is children that hum or they do something like this. Mm -hmm, and they're off in their own world. And maybe something else in the environment is something they don't want to do, like their homework or uh, eat some particular food that they don't like. You know, mine was broccoli. Uh, you know, whatever that is, that often there's an understanding that if I vibrate in a certain way, that I can relate to this in peacefulness. So, so the second tool would be um, like an intonation or invoking you know, harmony, however you would might do that. So maybe uh, you do sing or you put on music and you sing along or you t turn the shower and the water makes enough noise so you can sing. <laughs> then, then you have one of those experiences one day when you actually hear what you sound like. And it's, it's like, oh my God, I had no idea that I sound like that. Okay, let's see. The, the Third one, ah, yes. Um, and we've done that tonight already today. Uh, tonight is, and that would be a prayer so that we can call forward what we want to create. And to me, this is something that transcends religion, so it can be religious if that's how you see it. That's your way of relating to it. So I'm not in any way against religion, however that works for people. I just look at it as it's, it's invoking or engaging our higher nature. And that can be very transcendent, that it gets beyond who we are individually, that we're, we're having awareness of something more powerful than the sum of our parts. Uh, that's one way of I experience the divinity, the, the, the deity, and I do have my faith, you know, and I think there is a faith that we practice in the movement of spiritual inner awareness, so we practice a faith. But in the, another way, I'd say we're not very religious in the traditional or conventional ways that often people think about that, maybe more philosophical. I just encourage you to, that you can invoke peace through prayer, uh, through the Institute, we have a, um, a peace prayer process that we share, that we invite other people to do. So that's something you could subscribe to. We do them regularly you know, for periods of time, maybe 40 days. It, it varies, 30 days. Um, <clears throat> and there's something to me that also happens because we do it together, uh, that there's a group of us who gather so two or more who are gathered in this vibration, in this name, 
this intonation of peace and harmony and love, these qualities that we want to create, that that works as well. So now we're going to do the blessing. Um, in some ways, I consider we've prepared ourselves so that we're all more in the intonation, the vibration of peace, or more open because we've been moving and working through a process this evening toward greater peace. Uh, even if the issue has come more present, more conscious for some of you, so my, right now you might say I'm an issue. That's where my awareness is. I, I feel like that's the direction right now as I'm pulled into what's bothering me. My, my view is that's okay. Work it. That you have the awareness of, to know your intention. So if you want to move whatever that issue is toward peace, you can do it. And I'm going to uh, use the visualization, the intonation, and, and also the prayer calling forward what we want to create in this blessing. Dear Lord, we welcome your presence for each one here who is with us in the way that would be revealed as a, a truth, a living truth, a consciousness that knows peace directly, and knows it toward all, that we would invite ourselves, each one of us, to move into this consciousness of truth, that is peace, that's honoring toward all, that we invoke also our ability to see it through our imagination, to visualize peace. We ask for your assistance that whatever ways we can better see the clarity of the peace, the power of peace for ourselves. So right now you could show that anyone or any situation in which we experience againstness or conflict, that we are harmonizing in the sound of peace, that we can hear it as a name, as a word, and hear it as a song. We could also see it as movement that we relate to as harmony, as joy. And for what is needed in the world, beginning with ourself, for our life in the world, that we call it forward in prayer, that we have a voice inside that knows our needs, and ask for whatever can be done through grace. Because we are asking, each one of us. So hear our prayer. Hear our petition. That it begins with each one of us and it extends to whoever is near, whoever we are close to, those we consider our loved ones, and those we consider in opposition, that we have disturbance as a pattern, as a record of what has taken place up to now that we ask for resolution, that we can visualize this resolution coming into peace, into understanding. That we understand we hold the keys through our willingness, our intention toward peace, through acceptance through forgiveness through willingness 
to work things through so everyone shares in the benefit. That there is a way to peace, a way to understanding. We just take a moment to hold it, that we have the keys to peace in our hands, in our mind, in our choices that become results. So we see it going forward. So the power of this peace is overwhelming. people are turned into the understanding of peace toward all. And whatever must be removed, cleared, lifted, to come into cessation, so is no more. That we have the consciousness that is open, that that can be done. And so it is. Beirish Beishan. Thank you for uh, joining me here tonight and calling me to be with you for whoever extended the invitation. Uh, so Doug and, and uh, Gary, I think, are going to share some additional information with you. I did want to say that for those of you who are active ministers with the movement of spiritual inner awareness. We uh, have uh, an ordination. We have a new minister who's going to be ordained this evening if you want to stick around. Um, and we also have uh, some other events. I'm going to be attending up in Kalamazoo this weekend and then uh, afterward up in Minneapolis. So hopefully Gary and Doug will share some of that information. God bless you all.